What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video. And today we are doing a uh, tutorial. This is gonna be a uh, explanation of something that I'm getting a lot of requests for uh, based off of my original review video for this speaker, the Harbinger Vary V2312. Um, I mentioned in the video that I do make, or I did make uh, speaker covers and I got a lot of inbox or request about you know what I charge for them and unfortunately I don't make them anymore and the main reason I don't make well there's a couple of reasons I don't make them anymore one is I don't really know how to use my sewing machine so my wife was the one that was doing most of the sewing and she's going back to work now and doesn't have enough time to really uh, fill these orders and I just don't know how to use the sewing machine so I've never figured it out and I really don't have a lot of time to do that so um, that really slowed things down and then in addition to that it was I start it, another reason is I made these covers because I needed them at the time and then I kind of bragged about it online on Facebook and I got orders and filled some but I really did not intend to make a business out of it and it's because it, it's kind of it's it can be a little bit of a pain to make them um you gotta d really wrestle with this stuff uh and then when i don't have the speaker available for me to do it make it in front of me it's a lot harder i've been really good with um getting the dimensions from the manufacturer's website and building it according to that spec but it's always so much easier when you have the speaker in front of front of you and you can you know adjust and uh, fix your mistakes so it comes out a lot better so what i want to do is i want to show you how i made these covers and i found um something that can help fill the gap or the void created by not having someone who can sew and it's this tape that you can buy uh, apparently um, people who work with cloth or whatever who make you know alterations and uh, tailors they use this type of stuff and it's a tape that's like basically it's like a double-sided tape it's really sticky and it bonds fabric together so I'm gonna do this is my I haven't even done it yet I've used it on other clothing like to hem up my pants or whatever and it worked really well and it it's labeled as permanent and it feels like it is going to be permanent so I'm going to try it with these speaker covers and see if we can make it work and um, I need to go grab the tape but here is pretty much everything else that you'll need for it. this these are the speaker cover blankets that are the moving blankets that's what they are the moving blankets that I got from a store called Harbor Freight if you don't have one nearby they have a website but they are pretty popular they're like a hardware store they do budget gear but a lot of their stuff is just it's not cheap cheaply made it's just less expensive than what you might see at Home Depot like if you ever need a wrench for like a one time not even a one time but you have a, a, a job you need a specific tool for I say go to Harbor Freight first because you'll find it cheaper there and you won't spend as much as you would at you know the bigger stores but they sell the uh, blankets in uh, black and then they sell them in blue I've sold I've made covers out of both um, materials the blue seems to be a little bit thicker the black is uh, a little bit more manageable especially if you're trying to talk about sewing it but they come in sizes of 40 inches by 72 inches and I think this one might be the same size because I always try to buy the biggest size yeah this is a 40 by 72 but they make a, a, a smaller one I think it's like 40 by um, 52 or something like that it's just a smaller shape or a smaller piece of fabric but what I I like to get the bigger ones because the bigger uh, pieces come it means more fabric and um, you don't spend as much trying to get one speaker cover done so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump these in how much do these cost these were $4.99 $4.99 each so I spent $10 under $10 for the material the uh, tape I'm gonna get when we get to that part I'll pull it out and I think that cost me like seven bucks not even seven bucks it's actually less than that. I got it at Walmart I'll check the price when we get to that point and um, beyond that you just need a pair of scissors a marker I use a sharpie and a straight edge I also 
use a um, tape measure sometimes, depending on the dimensions. Like if I'm doing a subwoofer and I need to really use big pieces of cloth, then I use a tape measure and then, then I use the straight edge of this ruler um, to uh, make my lines. But for what we're gonna do right here, and this is why I love doing it when I have the speaker in front of me is because I, can, I don't have to do as much uh, manipulating with the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by opening up this right here. And we're gonna just get a good idea for how big the uh, speaker is in relation to the fabric. So I'm just gonna wrap it around because what I'm going to do in making this cover and this black is really it seems to actually have gotten a little bit thinner than when I first used to make covers but I like that because it, it's more manageable the fabric is definitely more manageable so my goal is to get a piece of or a sack that I can sling over the speaker and you can approach it a couple of different ways. You can make a panel for each side. It's something that I do a lot of when I was making them. So that gets a little bit harder because you have to cut out a panel. You have to cut out a piece of fabric that is this high and this wide. And then you have to kind of feel it, um, take into account for the space that you're gonna use when you, when you are sewing. You get kind of a um when you bring the two pieces of fabric together there's like a lip and it takes away from the actual usable amount of fabric that you're going to be having for your uh, panel so i don't like doing it that way i always prefer to have I, I like to do it in as little few pieces as possible so what i'm thinking is a tube of fabric that goes around and a top that's the easiest way to get this done now i would use my tape measure in fact let me go ahead and get my tape measure because this is gonna make the job so much easier. So tape measure, important part to have. What you wanna do is just take your tape measure and just wrap it around. How much fabric do you need to go around the speaker? And I'm also gonna account for the fact that I like my covers to be a little bit loose so I don't have to fight with them. If they're really snug, you really waste a lot of time trying to get the cover on to the speaker so I like to have it a little loose and that's something I've learned you know just from making them so let's go with 53 inches and then account for the fact that you lose an inch when you meet two pieces of fabric together to join them so I got 52 inches of um, slack and then another inch for the seam so let's go with a 53 inch piece of fabric and if I remember correctly, this fabric has a width of 72. So, in fact, let me keep this to make the dimensions. I need a piece of fabric that is going to be 53 inches around, or 53 inches wide, so it can go around the speaker. 53 inches. And I need it to be at least the speaker is 23 and a half inches high. Well, that's at this point. It actually ramps up. So let's go from the front. The speaker is 24 inches high. So I want, let's put a count in for the seam. So let's go with a 25 inch speaker, uh, five inch, uh, 25 inch high piece of fabric. And the reason I'm not gonna go too much over is because if it's too tall, then it's gonna be really baggy and it's gonna slump over on the bottom. You don't want that. I'd rather it be too short than it be too long. So we're gonna go with a panel that is uh, 25 inches high. 25 inches high. So now what you do is, let's, this, let's get this speaker out of the way. And I'm doing it on a table. A lot of times, I normally do this on the floor. I'll be in the kitchen and I'll just spread the uh, fabric out because it's a lot easier that way. It's more efficient that way. 
I'm not gonna say it's easier because it's not. It's really hard on the knees when you're getting up and getting down on the floor like that, which made me not wanna do this. <laughs> But uh, let's go ahead and cut out. And what I like to do, so when you get this fabric or these moving blankets, they have a seam that goes all the way around them. It's, I forget, I think it's some kind of a finishing is what they call it. And basically it's a piece of cloth that folds over the edge and is sewn all the way down. And it makes it look really nice. It gives it a finished touch. So I like to keep that finished, on that finishing edge on the bottom. That's gonna be, the speaker goes on top and this is the bottom. So it makes it look as clean and as professional as possible. So let's go. We need the speaker to be, or the tube to be 25 inches high. 25 from the bottom, 25 inches high. And I'm gonna mark across 25 inches high and then I'll make a line using my straight edge but the tricky part about this is these pieces of fabric are not 100 percent straight angles the fabric may come in a little bit and go out a little bit so there is some variation I mean it's a lot of uh, imperfections that's probably why this material is so inexpensive and they sell it in bulk so we're just going to keep marking 25 and 25 because my goal is to get a piece of cloth that is 53 inches coming across so if I use my tape measure and this edge right here, I think we said 53, so I need to be going. Like at least to where that crease is. So I need to be marking it out because I'm gonna have to make a line that goes all the way across. All right. So this is that where that crease was. So let's go with the 25. And I should have mentioned from the get-go of this video, yeah, this might be kind of a long one, because uh, I'm doing this all in real time, and this is uh, my first time doing it like this. So I'm drawing this line here because that's telling me where I'm gonna be wanting to cut. I wanna cut from here, down, and just get this strip of fabric it's going to be like a rectangle and it's just going to go around the speaker itself. And my purpose for making these lines across the way was to help keep me straight. So if I start here, I know this line is 25 inches and I know this line is 25 inches. So this is a good line, good straight, even line. And I'm going to do this all the way across. pick up from here, which was at 25, and then this line is at 25. And just mark it down. And this mark right there is the 25, and this one's at 25, so just go all the way down. So there. Put that up. Now comes to one of the parts that I really don't enjoy and it's cutting. And it see you would think that cutting is really easy, but cutting this blanket, you know, maybe just one or two cuts, no problem. But when you're trying to cut panels, so you've got multiple cuts, it really hurts your hand. And these aren't exactly the best scissors. I've had some really nice ones that we were using, but this material is so dense, it really uh, makes your scissors go dull quickly. So that's another added expense you got to think about. You want to get good scissors, but you're going to end up wearing them out the more covers you make.
All right, so I have liberated my tube and it's almost ready, but there's something else that needs to be done. This is leftover stuff. I may or may not be able to get a top from this remaining piece. I didn't expect to, which is why I bought that second uh, speaker, I mean moving blanket. And just by doing a casual measurement, I think I will be able to. This is going to be really cool. So for $5 plus the cost of the uh, tape that I'm going to show you, you can get a speaker cover done. All right. So I said this wasn't perfectly ready to be used because you have finishing Edge, you have a finishing edge on this side and I don't like to use that. It might change because now I'm using that tape so that tape may uh, make things even easier. So let's do this. Let's pull the um, speaker back up on the table so we can wrap it around. Bam. So this is what the speaker cover is going to look like eventually. Now, bam, you got a little bit of an overlap and that's cool. Like I'm holding everything tight right now, but you get that much overlap. Now what I wanna do is actually take that uh, uh, sewing tape and Give it some slack. Like I said, I like to have some slack in my speaker covers so I'm not fighting to put them on. And tape it down. So let me go get the tape real quick and um, we'll come back. And then if this holds really, if this holds well, then the next step will be to get a piece of fabric that is a little bit bigger than this because we want to be able to flap it down in and um, tape around and make that connection all right so here it is this is what i got it's from walmart uh, it's called pale and stick fabric fuse comes in this uh, packaging it's got a little green design on it background's white um, walmart i checked it it's 3.99 for this pack and this pack is uh 20 feet worth of fabric fuse so what i'm going to do is take this and it's just like I said it's just tape that has really sticky stuff on both sides it's got a waxy uh, covering on one side so you peel it down and then you take out the waxy part and fuse it to the piece of fabric fuse you fuse it to the other piece of fabric it worked well for my pants so I'm gonna give it a try with the speaker and I've already cut it to the proper size, so basically I'm just going to get me some fabric fuse and fuse it this way with the finished edge, which is the part that has the flap over it on the outside. So you have a, a very clean, good look. So you just roll it out. Make sure you get as close to the edge as possible. I start on pressing down on this end and then push across. And then I want to grab my scissors and cut off right here at the top. So let's do press down because you want to get a good fusing of the fabric. As you are pressing down on it, you can see a little bit of the background color coming through from the fabric. And I guess that is showing you that you got a good seal of it. So then we're going to want to go right over it with the other edge. But before you do that, you got to remember to take this white piece off. So. And this stuff is very sticky. So try not to make too much skin contact with it because it can get messy. But you got that off. 
and I'm gonna go with I allotted an extra inch for the overlap so and I want to make sure at least this edge goes beyond that edge of the uh, stickiness so let's just line it up and place it down I start on the edges and then go into the middle and spread out all right that's what I'm doing I said that as if I do that normally normally it's supposed to be sewn but we're not sewing if you were sewing you would have uh, just taken the two edges if you were sewing it you would be putting it together inside out the gray part out sew down and then once you're done flip it open on the outside and be black but because we got this uh, super sealy tape or fabric fuser we may not we don't need that so let's um, go to the next step I believe we should give it a test or at least a fitting now when I did this with my pants to fix a seam I took an iron and went over it applied a little heat I don't really recommend it I would love to be able to do that but I don't recommend it with this uh, moving blanket just because the material is very it's kind of plasticky you can tell that or I can feel that it would melt if it, if it got really hot so don't do that let's see how well this tube fits over the speaker will it be too tight will it be just right and I'm being a little gentle because I'm not sure if the glue needs to set a little bit but boom there you have it right there the, the main body of the speaker I mean all I have to do next is make a top to go over it tape the top so it sticks like it should and then um, cut holes for the handles so let's do that let's go ahead and shape or get a um, panel for the top and to do that you get some more fabric this is really cool this is gonna save you guys so much money because speaker covers are expensive they're functional they do something but they in my opinion are uh, expense that I'd rather spend on something else because they don't really contribute to your show other than the fact that they keep your gear looking good and that is important your gear should look good but I think if you're careful and you spend less money by making your own stuff you can uh, save money you cannot spend money unnecessarily so this is what I'm doing. The shape of the speaker is the same from the top or the bottom, so it's not like I need to flip it over just to get it right. So what I get at the top is what I'm gonna get at the bottom. So I'm gonna take this marker and I put it up right next to the speaker and I'm gonna get an outline of the speaker. So that is what I need to be covering. Now, because I need to have a lip that's going to flip into it I need to probably put an allowance I need to add at least half an inch around all that so how am I going to do that the best way for me to do that is to get a ruler and make half inch marks and connect them so let's go with a half inch there half inch there All right. Okay, so I took my original footprint and then put an extra half inch around and created a wider footprint. Now I'm just going to cut that out. Okay. So these are the scraps. Thank <laughs> you. 
bring this back up. And this is where I'm going to be doing the inside out part that I mentioned that I normally did when I was sewing, but you'll see why it comes in handy to do it this way. So inside out, sleeve up your tube, sleeve it up, tube it up, whatever you want to call it, bam. All right, so that's covering your speaker. You want to take this with the gray part sticking out as you, at you as well. And the goal now is going to be to use that tape to join this together. So I'm thinking, take the tape, wrap it all the way around there, and then carefully, because once you touch it together, it gets very hard to take apart, carefully start seaming all this stuff up together until we have a nice little seam glued up. So it's either that or my other option would be to put the tape on all these different parts and then slowly put it together. And the more I think about it, that might be a better way to do it because it's a little bit more methodical and you can actually be aware of what you're doing. So I'm gonna do that. And it's not just gonna be all taped at once. I'm gonna do each little piece at a time. So let's do this. Take the tape. Put it across. Press it down, make sure you get a good bond, a good fabric fuse. Now I'm looking at it and I'm realizing it might not be exactly the way I'm setting it up. Cause I'm thinking about how I want my um, seeing the look. It might be easier for me to do like I had been doing originally. I'm gonna show you how tough the, oh, went to, oh, okay, this is how tough this stuff is. I may have to use another piece of fabric because it's on there. If I take off the little uh, white stuff, that comes off because it was designed to But this ain't, well, I can do it. I can still use this. This was set up like that. So if I go here, the important part is to have the black on the inside because when you flip it out that's what color you want it to be i've actually made a mistake for one uh set of covers i made and he was cool and uh he didn't care he was like these are covers they're, just, they're made to be thrown around they're not made to be looked at but uh i had the outside blue and the top gray it's not how i intended it to be so Yep, I'm gonna have to do this over again. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. It makes it a great clean seam. What I'm getting, what I was aiming for is what I got here. Nice clean seam right there, right? Looks really good. But I'm not making gray speaker covers. Or I didn't think I was. What I should have did was did the black to black all the way around, made the black seams. Let's see if it's not too late. Okay, it let me take it off. Not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. And the dustiness uh, from the blanket 
it stuck to the tape. Like I said, I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, so I should have been going this way, the black on the black. And the black is not as dusty as the gray, so that might be a better fit anyway. So let's try this. I think in the end, this is gonna be a matter of you kinda of get what you pay for. I mean, you're saving money by making your own, but there are gonna be some um, sacrifices made, or trade-offs, I should say. So, let's go ahead and put this black to black, fuse it together, see how well it stays. Yeah. Fuse it. Fusing that fabric. So I'm using the tape to do what normally would be done with a sewing machine, and that's keeping this fabric together. Let's try it on this edge right here. I prefer the sewing machine, to be honest. I'm not sure how well this tape is gonna last, but that's what this video is all about, to see if it will work. Instead of me just saying, hey, I found some product that might help you make it without someone to sew, without a seamstress. It's time to fuse these pieces together. And I try to make my first contact the only contact because it gets really sticky. Like, so place it where you want it to be, you know, and make sure that that is your final answer. <laughs> All right, one, two sides down, two more to go. Maybe three, because there's a little angle. One, two, three. Which is cool. All right. Bring this all the way across. And this stuff is rarely sticky. It will get on your fingers. So let's go ahead, cut off the excess. Press it down, make sure we get a good fabric fuse. I like that name, it's pretty dope. going along pretty well. We'll see how well it really went once we flip it over. All right. I think I can get this whole side in. No. 
because I wanted to be a, I wanted to be clean. So we'll do these last two sides. This one. I have high hopes for this. Then once it's done, the real test is going to be when you take it on the road. Once you're taking it off speakers, putting it on speakers, throwing it around in your car. I mean, I know how well the material itself holds up. And it does a decent job. It's a moving blanket. It's designed to be roughed up. I, my first uh, speaker covers I made using this material are still in use when I use them. Funny enough, when I made the first pair, I felt like I was slacking and I needed to do better. So I made some speaker covers because I didn't want to spend that kind of money. Made them, turned out great. And I don't use them as much as I thought I would. It's weird like that. All right, this is the last little stretch. Ah. So what just happened here is the stickiness even departed from the wax. So let me dump that and try again. Like this stuff is so sticky, it messes up my scissors, it's stuck to my fingers. That's why I think it's going to be successful because as time goes on, once it's off of the uh, paper, this stuff really uh, sticks even more. Right. I told you, this is fabric fuse is like the real deal. Excuse me. All right. So that was the last piece. Let's Make sure it's on good, press it in, Some bonds with the material. Get this little wax paper off. This is hard. Use that fabric. If I was doing this with a sewing machine, uh, I'd have to go through the step of getting it like this and then pinning it up using sewing pins so it could be in the shape it needs to be for my wife to be able to sew it. Um, it's just a lot of extra work using the sewing machine. But this fabric fuse seems to be doing it. So. Let's flip it over. Let's see what it looks like. And right now this is just a tube. Well, the top has a little bit of shape to it, but it'll conform to the shape of the speaker. Yeah, see, the way that I did something in reverse because the little corner I put over here instead of there but I'm not too concerned about that I could have made it a big circle and been equally as protected and this will that's the thing about fabric it will fall into place so it doesn't matter where I put it the only determining factor really is going to be where I put the holes for the handles
So there you have it. Bam. It looks good. It looks, I mean, I'm happy with it. I can see where I should have pressed down a little bit more. There's some glue showing here and there. Let's join it back together. Um, let's go ahead, cut a hole for the handle. Let me mark my hole first. I see my handle is right here. And I'm not doing anything special when I'm cutting these holes. Just marking where the hole, where the handle is. There's one on top and there's one on the side. I cut me a little rectangle. That's where I cut out the fabric and that's where my hand goes in for the handles. Here's your other hole for the handle. So now you have it. You got a speaker cover to protect your speaker when you're traveling with it or when you're moving it from gig to gig. If you are reasonably gentle with it, you won't tear it up too much. I mean, you're just using it to cover it and to protect it while it's in your uh, vehicle. I know uh, when I don't have, it seems like whenever I don't have my covers on, that's when they are sliding around in the back. That's when I did a, a poor job of packing. But this will protect you from that poor job of packing and allow you to transport your speaker around, protect it, and it cost me, what do we say, five dollars for the, uh, yeah, ten bucks. It was like five and five. Five for the cover, five for the, uh, the tape. And I have enough tape to make more blankets. I mean, more covers. Comes right off. How easy to put it on? Let's try that. If it's on the floor, you just take it. You know your hole's right there. It's going to be on that side, so just tube it up. Drop it. Boom. There you have it. It is a simple solution for a simple problem. And it will save you, I think, probably per speaker. I was seeing prices going for like 40 to like $70 for a speaker cover. And if you want, you can get pockets added on. You got extra material. In fact, hey, you want, let's do it. Let's do it right here. So this side has the hole for the handle. Top has a hole for the handle. We want to put a pocket here. Let's do it. All right, so what I'm going to do is cut a piece of fabric now that I have my marker so I can mark it. I'm going to go ahead and cut some fabric. Just get a square, a rectangle, I should say. Let me mark it first. It's always easier when you mark it. So what I'm gonna do is just three pieces of the sticky tape, slap it on there. Actually, I'm gonna do it like this. Sticky here, sticky there, so I can slap it on here underneath this flap. I got a little bit, let me let you see that. So I left a little bit of the, the finishing flap over there. I'm glad I did because now I can just go ahead and either have a nice finished pocket top to put it into, or if I want, I can flip it down there. I'd like it this way. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take it off and apply our pocket. This is actually really dope, the way this is all coming together. So there's that flap. I'm gonna put the unfinished end under the flap. There'll be sticky stuff under it, fabric finish, and both sides. So let's do it. Now this is why 
I like doing this channel because I can show y'all stuff that I figure out and I can do it as I'm figuring it out. Because this is my first time doing it this way. Previously, I needed to have uh, these things sewn together. So apparently, somebody out there was as horrible as sewing at me as I am. And they came up with a way to get the job done without having to sew. Another example of the phrase, necessity is the mother of invention. So many great products were discovered because there was a need. There's a lot of solutions for problems that don't exist. But it's the ones that are solutions for problems that do exist and that solve them. With a budget in mind, those are the ones that do well. All right, so I got my fabric fuse on all three sides. I'm gonna press down, make sure I get a good fusing of the fabric. And the goal is to go right into here. Press it down. So let's go ahead. Take off the white tape. Right there. telling you this is going to be nice and something you'll want to use because it actually works. Okay, let's do this bottom edge. A lot of times I notice it's best to do it from the side that has the least amount of loose fabric because like I said, this stuff is really sticky and once you peel off the backing tape, it's gonna stick to whatever it touches. So, bam. And I may have to, well, yeah, I got it right at the edge. Perfect. So this is the last little seam. There we have it. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. This works. This works for me. It fits my needs. So I got a speaker cover. And right here on the back, I got a pocket where I can put my power cord my speaker cord. And so whenever I need to use the speaker, I can just grab it and go. I got more videos coming, like a lot of videos coming. I wanna talk about some other things. Um, I started doing gigs again. I did my first wedding of 2020, uh, my first wedding in about a year and a half. So I wanna recap on that. Um, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. I should say that in the beginning of the videos, but I never do, but subscribe like, share, comment. Um, let's talk about what we're doing and um, hope y'all have a great weekend. Had a great weekend and look out for the next video and I'm out.